guys, 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 we are back, guys, shout out to everybody, guys, shout out to the subs, everybody who clicked on this, guys, obviously, super huge, giant, the biggest shout out ever to the hive, guys, guys, you know, guys, you know how much I love you guys, um, I mean, I'm, it's, well, we're, come on, guys. I'm 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 hyped to this before, guys. At this point, guys. Um, so, guys, I know it's been forever since we've done any B. I know it's just because you know the amount of free time that I have is like been limited lately, and we're doing so much other music on this channel too. And I'm trying to get through everything, and um, so. But guys, doesn't mean I forgot, guys. Doesn't mean we're not still doing literally, literally everything that she's ever done. So, guys, we've done all the albums. All the Destiny's Child albums. Um, we've seen most of the videos, not all of them. I know there's still some more to watch, so we will be getting to those. Um, but, guys, when I say everything, we're watching everything. Including random stuff like this interview, which I don't even know. It literally just popped up for me. Literally, all it says is Beyonce interview. So, <laughs> I don't even know what this is exactly. Other than a Beyonce interview, so... Uh, guys, let's just get into it. There's no date or is there a date in the description? Or something? It says, uh, following this day music festival celebrating Nigeria's independence, we returned to the states where I directed this interview with Beyonce. Ah, oh, Kim Watson. Okay, well, I guess we're gonna be watching Kim Watson interview Beyonce. I don't know. Let's get into it, guys. Hopefully, this is not a terrible interview. <laughs> Hi Beyonce, it's good to see you again. Nice to see you ladies. What was your experience like in the, the same music festival? I was so excited to come to Africa and so excited that I wanted to do something really, really special. So I asked my driver, <laughs> was there an anthem or something I could learn so everyone would know how much I you know, look forward to coming to, to Nigeria and I wanted everyone to know how much I appreciate it how beautiful everyone is and their amazing spirits that I, you know, I admire that. And um, during my sound check, someone sang a song to me and I said, you know, I think I could learn that. So I wrote down the lyrics and wrote out the sheet music for my piano player to play and um, we did it. And I was really nervous because I didn't want to mess it up. <laughs> but I was nervous and I, I got a lot of help from everyone. They were singing along and I could see how proud they were. And it just was one of those moments that I'll take with me forever. How, do, how would you compare your That's experience fire. in Nigeria to say growing up in America or your experience in any other country that you visited? Well, you know, people, you know, are so far away when you show that you care enough to go so far away. They appreciate it so much. And I'm American, so I perform here all the time. And um, I have great fans here, but they can't compare to the fans all the way in Nigeria. And just the strength that I saw and the beauty I, I saw was just so fascinating. It made me feel at home because I know that yeah. you know, my, my roots are from Africa. Speaking of roots, that's quite interesting actually. Jay-Z recently on MTV spoke about his experience in Africa and his first-hand sight of poverty in Africa. Mm. And he um, actually developed a Water for Life project with the UN, yes. which was quite impressive. Do you have any plans to do anything of such in the future? Absolutely. My mother and I have a clothing line. It's called House of Darion. And actually 10% of all the money we make, I have the Survivor Foundation. And um, I'm right now in the process of doing, building transitional housing in, in Houston, where I'm from, because a lot of Hurricane Katrina yeah. survivors are there. And as soon as we get that on its feet, oh, that's there's something you can tell my that oh, yeah, we want to do like... in Africa. And I don't know if it's partnering up with Oprah with our school or partnering up with the UN. I visited some of the orphanages and, um, you know, there's so many children there and so many people in need. That's why it was important for me to come and perform and let them know that we care. You've made such an impact in everybody's lives so far. but. Before you actually became who you are today, somebody must have had a great influence in your life as well. Yes. And that must have actually challenged the way your music has gone. 
So who is that person that's actually impacted in your life and your music? Well, um, my biggest inspiration is my mother. She's my best friend and I'm able to work with her. And I know um, she designs all of my clothes. She's just a strong, beautiful black woman. And she's been the rock in my family. And she's not a singer, but she is, if I could be like any woman, it would be my mother. Um, also, as far as performers, Tina Turner. I know she, <laughs> I don't think she meant it like that, but it sounded funny. It was like, she's not a singer, but like, I uh, friend anybody I would be my mom. <laughs> but uh, that's what, it sounded funny though. Like, you know, like, if she's not a singer, though, but I mean, I would be my mom. <laughs> I mean, it would be my mother. Um, also, as far as performers, Tina Turner. She's just strong. <laughs> She's like, I would be that. Okay, but in terms of what I actually do, and what I, <laughs> that's hilarious. And I think there's something really sexy that she's not afraid to make a, you know, an expression, or she's not afraid to be angry or to be passionate. Um, she's just honest and real and uh, passionate on the stage. I also Facts. love Aretha Franklin. Her voice is unlike any other voice. Um, Michael Jackson. Um, there's so many people. I go on and on and on. But well, Michael Jackson didn't seem to have that much of an impact in the world music world. Is that, do you feel there was a reason for that? No, I feel like he did. What? Actually, when, when I was performing and when everyone performed, as soon as we finished, the whole crowd was screaming, Michael, Michael. They wanted to see him and it's just amazing that... Wait, did she say that Michael Jackson did not have an impact? What? Years later, I don't know, it's been, what, what? 35 years, people still go crazy. I mean, I don't care what you say, the second you hear the bass line of any one of Michael Jackson's songs, no matter what you think, you're going to get goosebumps yes. in your heart generation. You're going to go on the stage. Come on. on the subject of music and great black... That's so interesting, too, that she said any bass line, because, like... So much of his music does have fire bass lines, like fire, super fire, like, uh, right? Right? Oh my god, that bass line on another part of me? Come on, man. Black performers. Black music seems to have lost its appeal. Um, Wait, in what's recent the performance. Ran to the stage to see Michael Jackson. On the subject of music and great black performers, black music seems to have lost its appeal. Um, in recent times, up until about 10 weeks ago, um, black music was responsible for about 80% of the billboard charts. Now it's about 40%. Do you think this is a temporary glitch or do you think this is a trend that's going to stay? Oh, definitely temporary. Um, every week there's a new person, a new artist, a new genre of music that's number one because there's so many artists. Um, that's what's so beautiful about music. You know, I'm able to go, go to Africa and to Japan and all over the world and that's one thing that we all love and we all connect. I know you all inspire each other and but I still believe that some sound better than the others. weird question look yeah. how big <laughs> to a country, somebody who likes and country, it continues to mm -hmm. they feel they might feel that R and B, black music, hip hop all sound the same. You know, and for some reason, you've made a huge impact in the mu music industry. So what is it about Beyonce's music that actually has the edge over the others? Well, I don't Am I know. Tripping? Was that kind of a weird question? I sort of said where they're coming from, but I feel like... I feel like since the 20s, like the 1920s, obviously we're in the 2020s, but... I feel like in the 20s, I mean, the 20s is in America is known as the jazz age. You know what I mean? I feel like from then on, like... It's always, I feel like since the jazz age, all the most popular music in America has been black music since then, you know? Maybe not the most, let's say, but like most of the most, you know what I mean? Some of the most, let's say. You know what I mean? Not all of the, all of the, some of the most, you know? Like, because yeah, like the R&B, even like, you know, like, like the Beatles obviously were the biggest group of the 60s, but you know what else was the second biggest group of the 60s? The Supremes. So it's like, you know what I mean? And then even into the 70s and the disco era. And then into like, obviously since at the end of the 70s and 80s, you get the hip hop era, which we're still in. And like, I don't know, I just feel like that's kind of like, that was kind of a weird specific thing. Like Billboard went down in the past 10 weeks. So was like, what? <laughs> I, I kind of see where she was coming from, but you know what I mean? It was sort of, also rock music, all rock and rock and roll. And well, rock, starting with rock and roll and then it evolved into rock and hard rock. But like, which, are, but you know what I'm saying? Like, it's kind of like, I don't know, that's kind of a weird question. 
ask everyone else. <laughs> I'm not trying to hate. Again, I'm not trying to hate. Um, I'm just commenting on the questions because um, I don't know. I feel like a lot of times, like I don't know if you if, if you guys have ever watched me watch interviews. I feel like it is this like it's like this most of the time where even like if they're like even when they're the best interviewer possible they're not because they're, it's an interview you know what I mean so it always just it's always a weird I don't know I'm, I'm not a fan of interviews at all like that's why to me like the, the greatest interviewers ever they weren't real interviewers which to me is if you guys ever seen Dick Cavett or Charlie Rose because both of them both of their shows they would have people on but it was it was like a conversation though it was like so semi interviewing where they're like asking like they would ask certain questions but it wasn't like ask answer ask answer ask answer ask answer you know what i mean that format is so it just feels so weird i mean no matter how good of an interviewer they are or like and they might be like a real cool person and everything but it's like it just the format itself is just i feel like that's why like interviews like that they're so um much more suited to to print to text you know what i mean maybe not print it's old but <laughs> maybe just like text you know what i mean because you can read this person said this here was the answer here was the you know what i mean that's perfect for that but i feel like when you're actually watching an interview it comes off kind of like you know what i mean it's just like this weird stilted kind of i don't know like it's not flowy and like natural feeling you know what i mean um but anyway but i mean again like i said they're they're doing good i mean it's just I think it's just the nature of interviews in general. Mm -hmm. The edge over the others. Well, <laughs> I don't know. You, you know, and for some people, they might feel that R&B, black music, hip hop, all sound the same. You know, and for some reason, you've made a huge impact in the mu music industry. So, what is it about Beyonce's music that actually has the edge over the others? Well, I don't know. You have to ask everyone else <laughs> that loves music. <laughs> <laughs> That's another weird question. Like. That's a weird question. What about? <coughs> but also, <coughs> she's so she's so cute because she's like she comes off very like. I've said it multiple times with how guys. How many times have I said when watching something with Beyonce that she's being too nice and too humble? Like, <laughs> like she really does not have to be at all, at all, at all, and she's she's going like overboard in the other direction. You know what I mean? Instead, like, to, I guess to maybe completely be avoid having to be called anything or be called a diva or be called, have people say, like, oh, did you know Beyonce's a total bitch? Like, you know, you know what I mean? Like, in order to avoid any of that, it's either she goes, like, almost too much the opposite way, though, where we see so many examples where it's like, man, B, you should be fucking throwing that shit around in everybody's face, you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, fuck that. Where it's like, what? Like, not even, again, not to be, not even that you'd have to be in a rude way, but if someone asks you a question that's ridiculous, if it was me, I would just re respond with, what kind of question is that? Oh, that's a crazy question. What are you talking about? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what? What gives your music that? What What are you talking about? What kind of question is this? I, I'm, I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> but I can say that, you know, I started... Which is funny. You just have to ask, what you say? You have to ask the people or the family? Age over the others. Well, I don't know. You have to ask everyone else that, that loves the music. <laughs> but I can say that, you know, I started out obviously with Destiny's Child. And I feel like I'll always be a member of Destiny's Child because we're family and we love each other. And, you know, I wrote a lot of that our, DC. our records in you know, Woman and Survivor and all of those songs. And one thing that, you know, the common thread between that and between my first album and my album now it's so much strength in, oh, okay. in our music be there. and it gives people hope especially women and sometimes <coughs> you need to hear those songs that give you that extra boost of confidence and that reassure that we're strong and we're beautiful and, and um, we're significant and um, I think people can appreciate that and I think women definitely can appreciate it. So in other words, are you saying that your, mu your music and your lyrics have matured over the years? Definitely. A lot of my songs, especially with my new album, some of the things I'm not going through right now, but my friends are and my relatives are and, you know, it was almost like three people that were closest to me were going through breakups okay. so a lot of my records are about that even though i'm not going through it um but a lot of life experiences i don't have to actually physically yeah. go yeah. through them yeah. but i know sometimes women need to hear those yes. songs so that's why 
Irreplaceable and Resentment and Ring the Alarm are songs on the record. Okay. And another thing I've also noticed is that most people transcend from music to acting or from music to designing or what have you, and they've not been very successful with it, let's not call names. But you seem to have been able to break across. Definitely with acting, I was given an opportunity. Um, someone asked me to come and read for this part, Carmen, and it was a TV movie. And I was like, I don't want to do that. I don't have time. Yeah, you guys told me to watch that. And I, I right. said, but you know, let me just try. So I did. We're going to watch it. We're going to watch it. And then Austin Powers is a big movie that already two of them were big success, successful movies. They, they were making a third movie and um, it was a part open for a black woman. And that's rare. And every black woman was fighting for this part. And they called and asked me. I wouldn't have even thought about it. And I auditioned and I got that part. And then that kind of started the next movie. And now I just finished Dream Girls, which is, hey, I think, going to gonna be one too. something Fuck. that. All right, we're going to watch this movie soon. It's so this. important for black history because it's, it's an all black cast of classy, timeless musical. And I think hopefully it'll open more doors for more actors and more musicals. And um, it's just. I'm so proud to be a part of it. But are you looking forward to more challenging roles or you know, a role that will really command so much from you? Absolutely. Take so much soul out of you. Definitely. The role I played in Dream Girls was a bit of that. Um, I think for the first time I really challenged myself and okay. I took acting classes for six months and I did not allow myself um, time to do anything but the movie because I wanted to really focus on the character and I became this character I don't even recognize myself when I watch the movie which <laughs> is good for you when you know you did your job <laughs> yeah. yeah that's why you know you've done a really good job yeah true true yeah so where do you see yourself 10 years from now which one of these three roles do you think will take the most prominent position singer actress that's really difficult um I'll be 35 and hopefully by that time married with two kids um Maybe, hopefully, if people still are interested, <laughs> doing sure more movies and, and um, tours. And I mean, I, I really like artists that have long careers that are able to. What's the, what's the last time she did a movie? Family, bring them on the road, tour yeah, around the world, yeah. and balance. Just have a nice, balanced life. I'm sure by that How time, many movies she do? if I'm married with children, they will be my first priority. And then the movies and the music, whatever happens, will happen. Okay, you remember in um, Destiny's Child's house, the three of you used to be like three mermaids? <laughs> <laughs> it was with the sequins and the long skirts and the tight boots and what have you. But over the years, I've noticed that you've metam metamorphosized into a real elegant woman. Thank you. Know, you. Your clothes are more classy, more, you know, more definely cut. And I noticed you had the ever wear necklaces, but you wear loads of earrings. Your makeup and your hairstyles are it's a bit more mature. Mm -hmm. So I wonder you know, over the years, whether like your music has changed and your lyrics have changed, maybe your style, sense of style has also changed to a certain extent. Do you actually have any other designers that you really favor? And oh. if so, can you mention some of them for us? Yes, um, I definitely have grown um, as far as my style. Yeah. Um, especially after I turned 21. Okay. I think, you know, usually when you're 18, 19, mm. you're going through crazy phases <laughs> with your hair and your makeup. Because of the age of Yeah, you, well. you're still trying to find yourself. The unfortunate thing is, I was a celebrity, so yeah. I have those bad hairstyles. That I, <laughs> <laughs> I remember that too. I have every, I've had every hairstyle, and every. I've never been afraid to experiment. Yeah. And I think, you know, that's a part of yeah, growth. Yeah, that's part of growing up. Yeah, but right. um, definitely, I, I've matured, and um, even my stage, my stage persona, and my stage clothes are completely different from the things that I wear every day. But I love all types of designers. Um, my favorite probably just because I feel like they cut for a woman that has a normal body. Yeah, um, it's delicious. <laughs> Roberto Cavalli. Um, yeah, yeah, he's good. Alexander McQueen. Do you wear Valentino as well? Oh, I love Valentino. Yeah, very elegant. Of them. Yes. Very elegant. So many people. Yeah, I'm that's going good. What about your, what about um, House of Deron? Every time I have on jeans, they're House of Deron. They just fit really well, and that was one thing I was adamant about. We, I, I sent back the jeans at least thirty times. Why? 
I wanted to make sure they fit right. Okay. And um, usually if you have wider hips, mm. it's hard for you to find something yeah, that true. still fits your waist. And that was something I said, we got to make sure they fit. Like they fit. fit. Yeah. Yeah. Making sure that you can have this. You know, you know what the secret part she doesn't tell you? She wanted the perfect jeans, so she said, make me some. And then like, all right, I guess we should build a company around this. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but that's what I would do, though. That's what I would do. Like, all right, I want the specific thing. Ah, fuck, it's really covered. Nah, I'm not saying that's how she did it. I'm saying, like, Couture. that's amazing, though. Like, hey, fuck, I got this cover. Or even the other way, too. Hey, we got this cover. Fuck, you know, I really want the most like, perfect jeans. Yeah, let's make them. Fuck it. <laughs> that's fire, too, you know? Either way, that's fire, though. Or fit and not have to pay $3,000 for a dress. And um, it, it's all about three generations of style. It's named mm -hmm. Darion um, because my grandmother's name. Her maiden name was Darion. Was she also into style as well? Was she she, she was a seamstress. Well? Okay. And um, my great grandmother was a seamstress. Oh, so it's a family thing. My then. mother. So. And um, she sews for me. I don't sew. <laughs> I mean, I, I actually, I can put darts. I can take music. up something. Yeah. Um, but I don't have time. Okay. But um, even when you were younger, did you rustle things up? Oh, like, definitely. I took rip the supplies and stitch it together. Oh. Every fabric, I stoned everything, I spray painted everything. Okay. My mom was like, stay out of my closet. <laughs> <laughs> my sister and I did the same thing. Oh, so okay. um, we share, all shared love of fashion. Okay, so it's an inherent thing in your family too? Yeah. Okay. What's a typical day in the life of Beyonce? Well, usually it depends if I'm working or if I'm, if I'm off. If I'm off, which is rare, <laughs> I do nothing. I stay at home, I watch TV, I order room service if I'm in a hotel, and I just stay in the bed and sleep, and I don't put on any nice clothes. I stay in my pajamas, and I, I might not even take a shower. <laughs> I might just <laughs> stay in the bed. <laughs> but if I'm working, and I'm usually up really early doing interviews, meeting a lot of fans, taking pictures, sound checks, performances. Do you actually miss the feeling of anonymity you used to have before you became Beyonce? Yes. Do you miss going to the mall and going to buy fish and chips and going to watch films with your friends? Fish and, and chips? Like yes. How do you compensate <laughs> for that? How do you not spend time with your loved ones? Um, I do spend time with my loved ones all the time. My family travels with me and I'm fortunate to bring home with okay. me. Okay. The, the time that it really gets to me the most is when I'm with my family eating and people come. And that's for autographs. And, and, autographs. and they paparazzi all over the place. Yeah, it's tough sometimes. But, you know, I I was in London and I, I wanted to go shopping and I completely forgot. I just forgot, like, because the place I wanted to go. Oh my God. The place I wanted to go was so many people there. And it was Saturday. And I went at 8 o'clock. The store closed at 9. I'm like, okay. You know, it'd be fine. I'm just going to pick up a couple things. And it was thousands of people in the store and they were all following me. I couldn't even go to the next uh, store. Oh, they the cloak and jacket thing. Long clothes and sunglasses. Weird they and know. annoying and creepy. <laughs> it, just, it, just, uh. it just draws more attention to you. But I still went shopping. So okay. I just got to fight through it. <laughs> You're a really beautiful woman. Thank you. Take it from one woman to another. Thank you. You know, and um, I just feel that most men would love to have you as their wives. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> have you thought about it? I mean, have you thought about it's not marriage wrong. anytime in the near future? Are you? Um, you know that happens when it happens. I'm I'm not in a rush. I believe a woman should should have a sense of who she is, and um, there are certain things we all want to do, and I think you should do that before you get married because I feel like you know, especially for me, my personality is all or nothing, and when I become married, yeah. I'm that my man will be my priority over my career and and when I'm ready for that then I'll get married but right now I still have money to make and you know I <laughs> so still have things time to see. soon I still it'll have to happens. Do. yeah <laughs> okay. I was really glad to have spoken with you thank my you. features editor on Nikkei and myself yeah. and um I know that you're coming to Nigeria I just gotta say that's the second time she said it like that thank you running of when which, what was she on the view or something? They go, you are Beyonce. Thank you. <laughs> was that was it the view or something? I forgot. But that was amazing. It made such a huge impact in the whole nation, the nation as a whole, and it also put Nigeria in a very positive light because you know we had the privilege of honoring you amongst Jay Z and so many other artists. 
But do you think anytime in the near future you have any plans to come to Nigeria again? I would love to come um, to Africa. I'm not sure exactly what part of Africa because there's still parts of Africa I haven't seen. But absolutely once a year. I feel like I, I have to. Um, okay. And everyone in Nigeria has no idea what they did for me. Um, they've done so much for me and gave me so much hope and made me have feel like I have a purpose and um, I'm just grateful because it was such a beautiful life-changing spiritual experience for me. When you were in Nigeria you had you visited Linka Childs where you met um, children from the mother's baby's home and I know that you've made such a huge impact in their lives. How does that feel seeing these children and seeing the joy that you put on your faces? It was unbelievable. I walked in and I see all these beautiful children um, from two, three years old to teenagers. And they did choreography to Destiny's yes, Child songs. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, I it that. was so beautiful. And the talent they had, just natural talent. Um, never had dance class, just natural, gifted children. Um, it just made me feel, first of all, I know people probably won't believe this, but I had no idea that people even knew who Destiny's Child was in Nigeria. I didn't even know they knew my songs. I was nervous about performing, like, are they going to know? They knew everything. Yes. They, they could do the choreography better than, than I can do the <laughs> choreography. And just, they kept holding me and it was just such a beautiful experience. It must have been exhilarating. Oh, absolutely. Are you surprised at how much, you know, how much, how wide your fan base sort of expands and how much we love and know of Beyonce's music and Destiny's Child? How did you find the response in Nigeria to the music? It was shocking. It really was. And, and like I said, I perform and sometimes you perform every night and everything kind of seems like one day, you know, and you forget, why am I doing this? What am I doing? And then you meet certain people and you go certain places and they remind you why you are who you are and um, they give you purpose. And I'm so lucky to have my job and to be able to travel to amazing places like Nigeria. And like I said, they made it such an impact on me, not even knowing it. What message do you have for your fans, for your fans in Nigeria? Nigeria. Um, I'd like to thank them for all of the support they've given me and Kelly and Michelle and Destiny's Child. And I'd like to tell everyone that I love them Stay strong, you're beautiful, and I can't wait to come back. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. I mean I mean, you know, it was like I said, for uh, for an interview that was actually pretty good. Um I just there's you know what I mean, there's something about interviews, but you know. Um I mean, cause I know we're I don't think we'll ever possibly see anything worse than that that interview she did with Chris Morgan. Oh my God, that was the worst. That one was definitely the worst. Maybe there's another one that we haven't seen yet that that will beat it. But like that. <laughs> so literally anybody. I mean, she could get interviewed by a fucking trash can. It'd be a better fucking interview than that Chris Morgan nonsense. So like, but my my point though is this was um, you know, it was. Very, I don't know how to say it, like surface level, but not like in a, I don't even know how to describe it. You know what I mean though? It was very like, <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? Just like a, like flat. It was just very, you know what I mean? It was very flat. I don't know why I'm doing this. <laughs> it was like very flat. Like, it was just. It, it, it was, it was, you know, it was. <laughs> I don't know, guys, we'll be back. Um, trust me, we have a lot more. I, re I already have more that, we're, that I've done, that we'll be posting, and more that we're going to do. We're super back, we're super back. Um, we'll be back, guys, like, literally, like, tomorrow. We'll be back, guys. Go in the description, guys. There's so many of you guys on this channel. There's not enough on the other one, guys. 
Go to my real channel in the description. And yeah, guys, we're back. 